Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my birthday vlog book haul video. If you've missed part one, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen so you can click on it and watch that if you haven't already. Um, that's the whole book shopping part of this video and today I'm going to be sharing the books that I received and bought for my birthday. I was initially intending to put this into the whole birthday vlog video and include it all together but the reality of life at the moment is that making and editing videos is taking a lot of time and a lot of energy. I'm readjusting my expectations all the time with a baby. Ivy is two months old as of recording this video. Editing a video requires planning and it requires preparation and it requires a lot of stopping and starting and so at the moment videos are going to be um, just a little bit different. I think I'm going to be focusing on getting videos out that maybe are a little bit more real, a little bit more vlog style and um, a little bit shorter perhaps than my usual videos. Um, I used to post videos that were about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, they're probably going to be more like 10 to 15 at the moment just so that I have time to actually edit the whole thing and put a video out each week as much as I can. I would prefer to do that than to spend hours and hours and hours stressing myself out to get maybe one video a month out. So I hope that's okay. That's the reason that I've split this video into two because it was just too much to expect of myself to record this on top of everything else and edit it all in last week. That's a long preamble, but that is why this video is coming separately. So I got a nice, fairly big stack of books for my birthday. I wanna talk a little bit more about reading and how I'm reading at the moment because it has changed slightly since having a baby. But I'm gonna save that for another video because I'm planning on doing a whole reading vlog video soon. Anyway, let's get into the books that I got for my birthday. I'll start with the books that were bought for me. So I was given this set of Jane Austen books. Um, I have various Jane Austen books in different collections and um, editions. And I think, I don't think I own all of them. I definitely didn't own a copy of Emma and Northanger Abbey and Sense of Sensibility. I think I had Pride and Prejudice Mansfield Park and Persuasion. I think they're the only ones I have copies of. So my sister bought me the whole collection of Jane Austen books. And I really like these because I really, I really wanna get into annotating books. I really love seeing people's um, aesthetic annotating. Not that I plan on doing it just for the aesthetic, but I just love the way it looks. And I love the idea of being able to read a book again in the future with all your notes and thoughts but I didn't want to do it in my nice penguin cloth bound editions because they're a little bit more expensive and I don't know it feels weird doing them in those um even though obviously if you own a book you can do whatever you want with it but for me it felt a little bit strange to do that so I'm really thankful that I have these copies because I think these will actually be perfect for annotating. So we have Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, and Persuasion. So in terms of Jane Austen books, I've read Persuasion and I've read like maybe half of Pride and Prejudice. I've never actually finished Pride and Prejudice. So I'm thinking that I might do a video series of reading these books. Um, a bit like I did Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights reading them for the first time. I might do a little Jane Austen series um, of vlogs reading these books for the first time and annotating them. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. But yeah, they're just really nice and floppy and I just think they'll be perfect for annotating. So I am so grateful for these and excited to dive more into Jane Austen. So those were the books that were bought for me. The rest of the books are ones that I bought with Waterstones vouchers. As I said, reading has been um, a little bit different for me lately. And with having such a limited amount of time to read, I've just been really craving books that are a little bit easier, a little bit more addictive to read, a little bit lighter. Um, just books that I know I'll be able to sit down and actually read within a week rather than 
the heavy fantasy books and classics that I was reading and struggling to get through like one or two a month. Um, so I just want a few books that are really easy and fast paced um, just to throw in there in amongst the harder books at the moment. And so I picked up a couple of books within that category. The first one is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I've read You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry and I liked it. I didn't, it wasn't a five star read. I think I probably gave it 3.5 or four stars, but I've heard that generally You and Me on Vacation is probably the Emily Henry book that's lowest on people's favorites from what I've heard and book lovers seems to be at the top. So I really want to give her books another go and I thought I would pick up the one that seems to be the most popular. This is a romance which follows a literary agent and a book editor and it's an enemies to lovers type romance story and it just sounds really light-hearted, fun, romantic just the kind of book that I need at the moment. And then the other one I picked up kind of within that category, I mean, it's not a lighthearted read, but it's a fast paced kind of read, is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'd already read Malibu Rising. Weirdly, that was the first Taylor Jenkins Reid book that I read, even though I feel like that's the one, again, people like the least. I tend to do that with books. I feel like I pick up the book um, by an author that people like the least and then I work my way up, but not even intentionally. <laughs> so I read Malibu Rising and I read One True Loves and Malibu Rising, I gave five stars. I absolutely loved it. One True Loves, I think I gave four stars or 4.5. I really liked that book as well. And so I've been wanting to read more Taylor Jenkins read books since then. Um, and so I finally decided to pick up Daisy Jones and the Six because I wanted to watch the TV show as well. Um, I've actually already read this. I picked it up pretty much straight after I bought it and absolutely flew through it in a few days. And yeah, I won't go into my thoughts on this now because I'll do a wrap up video um, in a couple of weeks time, but I absolutely loved this book and it was exactly what I needed right now. Um, really, really enjoyed this and I think probably my favourite Taylor Jenkins read book that I've read so far. One of my favourite books of last year was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and I bought that for my birthday last year, I think. I think that was in my birthday book haul last year. Um, I absolutely loved that book. It was one of my favourites of 2023. And so, of course, I had to pick up the sequel, Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands. I've talked about Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies so many times on this channel, but in summary, in short, it is a book about a Oxford professor or a Cambridge professor, I never remember which one, um, who is a professor of um, the study of fairies. And it's set in our world, except in this version of our reality, fairies are commonly believed to exist and it is actually an academic study to study fairies and so the first book follows her as she seeks to create the first encyclopedia of all of the fairies in the world and so this is the sequel and i'm so excited to read this book i really enjoyed reading the first book in march i think i read it in march last year because it is a little bit more cold and wintry um, but it also has that kind of almost cottagecore aesthetic to the story. And so I feel like March is a great time because at least in England, March is still very much winter. Even though it is technically spring, it feels like winter in March. So I feel like these books are great for this kind of transition from winter to spring. So I'm hoping to get to this one this month as well. And the final book that I bought is another classic and one that I'm probably not going to get to for a long time. It's a classic that I read when I was a teenager and I remember liking it. Um, I don't know if I finished it or not, but I remember trying to read it and it was just really hard. My reading days have changed. I read a lot more classics now. So I'm hoping that I will 
enjoy it and find it a little bit easier to read now. And I remember that I really liked the story and found it really interesting and knew it would be a book I would want to read again in the future. And so I decided to get it in the Penguin Cloth Bound Edition because I'm slowly collecting those. And that is Tess of the Devils by Thomas Hardy. I absolutely love this cover. I feel like this is one of my favorite um, cover designs of all of the Penguin Cloth Bounds. As I said, this is probably not a book I'm gonna pick up in the very near future, but it's one that I really want to read. And so I wanted it on my shelf so that I can have it on my shelf and reread it again in the future because I didn't actually have a copy of it. I read it in a big bind up um, of books that my mum gave me. It had like three or four Thomas Hardy novels in it. Um, but it's not exactly the most practical book to read because it is very big and bulky. I just thought this would be a fun one to add to the collection of Penguin Cloth Bound books um, and hopefully be able to reread it in the future. So those are all of the books that I got for my birthday this year. However, at Waterstones, they do this stamp card where when you get 10 stamps on the card, you get a £10 voucher. And with the books that I bought for my birthday, I reached the 10 stamps. So I actually have a £10 voucher to spend at Waterstones. So I need your help. I'm looking for a really spring book, a book that just captures spring so well. Um, and I'm doing a bit of research, have a few ideas, but I would really like to hear your favorite spring books, whether it's a period romance or a classic or just something that really captures spring for you. Please let me know down in the comments because I want to use that £10 voucher on, on a book like that. I just really wanna find a book that captures the feel of spring at the moment. So please let me know in the comments and hopefully that will help me make my decision on which book spend a £10 voucher on. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will see you very soon.